So, Alan, uh, congratulations on uh, on this move, the merger between uh, Kestrel Aircraft and Eclipse Aerospace. Uh, tell me how that all come about. Well, thank you very much. We're pretty excited about it. How did it come about? Obviously, um, our, this is a small industry, so we've known each other for a long time. Mason Holland, who's the, been the chairman of Eclipse and will be the chairman of, of One Aviation, is a Cirrus owner, so I've known him for, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. Ken Ross, who's the president, also a former Cirrus service center owner. So a lot of this is in the family and then ends up being the discussion about what works best for the companies, obviously, therefore, what works best for the customers, how do the businesses operate? And it, we've been talking about it for, I suppose, on and off a, a year, two years, something like that. And over the last few months, it's developed into today's announcement. Oh. Well, um, so this is an actual merger. Is there money changing hands here between any parties? Uh, there's a little bit of money changing hands. From the point of view of the company, it's all money coming in, though. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's better. Uh, Technically, what it, the structure will look like is a holding company that will own the shares of Kestrel and Eclipse. Um, it will function as one company. It will be uh, seen by the uh, outside world increasingly as one company. But obviously, there's a transition period. Right. So what's the benefit for the companies to bring, bring the two of them together? Yeah. So multiple benefits, and, and I could get carried away uh, going into them, but which I'll try not to. But I'll, I'll start with this way. You know, first of all, obviously, when you have a, an industry with high fixed costs, high overhead costs, anything you can do to increase the revenue side looks good to the financial world. So this is bringing more products under one, one structure. Obviously, f those include manufacturing, um, logistics, purchasing, things that are more fixed like HR and IT, and sort of a, a financial analysis that way that looks good. Probably more importantly is what it does from the ability of the company to do its job, which is deliver great products and services to customers. If you are a one product customer uh, company, you can go to the customer and say, here's what we have. If you have multiple products, you can go and say, what do you need? Let's talk about a variety of different products. And so it's that side of the business that's the most interesting for us is how do we grow these companies by having greater capability to provide those products, different products that customers might want. I see. So I, I've got to ask, you you uh, obviously are co-founder at Cirrus and and uh, have worked with composite airplanes all along and the, including at Kestrel and now we've got the Eclipse which is an all aluminum airplane and that, that sort of great debate about which is better. So what do you think? Well, as you've heard me say often and um, Probably somebody's got actual video of me saying this at some point in the past. It's it's not about the material. There are certainly some things that I've always thought composites does very well, and that's primarily about aerodynamics. It goes into aesthetics as well, and a little bit into what we would describe as ease of manufacturing. But the question would normally be put to me, which is stronger or which is lighter? Mm -hmm. And my answer was, you, you design the airplane so it meets the FAA rules. You design the airplane so it does its mission. It's easier to get nice smooth shapes with composites, but you, it, it's not that you can't do it with aluminum. So when you look at the Eclipse, obviously they've got some very innovative uh, aluminum technology in the friction stir welding and what that does to parts count and assembly and some of the things that, that approach uh, ways that we think of composites. But in the end, it's uh, a material that does its job. It's a nice smooth airplane. The aerodynamics of the, air, of the airplane, the Eclipse, are great. And so it doesn't really need to be composites. I was always, I, I would have a lot of people who would come to me and ask me about composites when I'd tell them why aluminum was okay. <laughs> they, would, they would think that somehow that was heresy for me. But it is something that we've always said. You know, it's just right. a different means of building an airplane. I happen to like tube and fabric as well. Yeah, okay. So you've struggled for a number of years for, uh, with funding at Kestrel. And some people say that the investment communities uh, Tim, being timid around in aviation investment goes back to Eclipse and the fact that it spent arguably a billion dollars developing that airplane and then ultimately went bankrupt and was liquidated before Mason Holland bought it. Yep. Um, is that, um, uh, so in some ways uh, you're, you're sort of, 
coming back to a company that was keeping you from succeeding with your previous company. What do you think of that? Um, I would agree with many of those points, and I'm, some, I'm one of the people who has said that some of the things that were a part of the original Eclipse financing clearly damaged the ability of our industry to finance new projects. Having said that, the issues that I have about the financial world really go beyond aviation. It, it, it's, it's how we fund new projects, new companies, new ideas in general. And we as an aircraft industry, obviously we look at things from our own point of view, but it's not accurate to say that the issue with financing new ideas is an aviation problem. Okay, so it's bigger than that. It's, it's definitely bigger than that. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem that goes throughout the economy. Yeah. Now, having said that, obviously, uh, Funding a project is difficult. It's been one of the things we've been working on at Kestrel. And we think that, that this changes that view um, from the financial world. Having these projects merge uh, changes the financial picture, changes the financial risk, changes the financial upside. And so we think that, well, we, we know that it has a different level of attraction to the financial world. So you believe now that you have a better chance of getting more funding for the Kestrel project to complete that airplane than you did before? Yeah, part of the announcement today with this merger to form One Aviation is that there is new capital coming into the company, but it isn't enough to finish the Kestrel on an aggressive time schedule. Having said that, as the project moves forward, if we just continue to sell uh, Eclipse airplanes and other airplanes, then we would get the Kestrel done anyway. And that's one of the, those dynamics that change. The question now is, how long will it take not what will you do if you don't get the funding? So this, this kind of puts a, a base case, a floor case in on the financials. But that obviously makes it easier then to go raise additional capital, both from a completion of the Kestrel to expansion on some other projects we'd like to do, some other services. You know, as, as you know, I've always been very bullish about general aviation. I think there's huge value to customers here. And the question is, what does it take for us as a business to be able to to deliver those products and services. This combination helps. Yeah. So are you able to, able to put a timeline yet on Kestrel certification? Well, well, as you know, whenever I'm asked that, I say there is no timeline. I know, but that was in the past. Then, it's all new to now. Say, right? But roughly, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's still quite a ways out on the, on the Kestrel timeline for certification. The next major step for us is building the conforming prototype, and we haven't started on that yet. But we've made a lot of progress on the design. We feel very good about the interaction with the FAA, um, very good about the market for the airplane. Obviously, plenty of issues for us to solve from a Kestrel point of view. And it's not done until it's done, but we feel pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. And what do you say to today's current Eclipse customers? Do you, do you sense any concern on their part that the company is getting diverted in different ways that may take away from, say, support of uh, existing customers? No, I, I actually get uh, exactly the opposite of that, okay. uh, an enthusiasm for build a stronger company, you know, give us the ability to have greater levels of customer support by having the bigger, stronger customer uh, company. But, but I also think what we see in the type of customer who would be looking at a Kestrel, an Eclipse would be an alternative that they would be considering. And there would be other alternatives that we would add to this product line. The, the way I've said it the last couple of days is that the car I drive is a Jeep with great big tires on it. But my wife drives a Porsche 911. And when she's driving her car, she doesn't look at the great big Jeep and say, gee, I wish I had one of those. And I'm happy in my Jeep. I get to ride with her in her car sometimes. Uh, there are different vehicles for different missions, different people, different needs. And that's true of cars. It's just as true of small airplanes. I said earlier to a group here in Germany that the ultimate compliment that we would hope the customer would have for our product line is that it was a very tough decision and they'd like one of each. <laughs> so what are some of the other products that you believe might round out a complete product line from a company like uh, One One Aviation? Yep. Well, not getting into specific details on what they would be, the, the types of airplanes would include other missions, which would be either you know more utility or more training or more supersonic transport that goes across the Atlantic, sleeping 12 with vertical takeoff capabilities. Or 
inside the verticals that we would have. You know, is there a, a, a bigger or smaller eclipse? Is there a bigger or smaller kestrel? Are there other ways that we offer those similar kinds of transportation to somebody that either uh, doesn't need that same size performance or at a different price point? Okay. Well, great. Uh, thank, thank you, Alan, for taking the time out of uh, your busy schedule there at Arrow. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week down in Lakeland. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep, we'll be in Lakeland next week. We've got a, a question and answer event on Tuesday morning, so we're looking forward to continuing to talk to people about what we think One Aviation will be. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot.